Also, I'm really excited for the sweetie one because, like, just sweetie is just everything. So to have that under my belt is amazing. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the fifth episode of Kind Conversations. I'm your host, JB. I'm Lil Jake. And today we have a very, very, very special guest, um, the first lady, we would say, of Lyrical Lemonade. The one. The Miss, only. Miss Lemon. Miss Lemon, <laughs> if you will. The Taylor Ta Money. Money. Let's go. So, Taylor Money, Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. or Athens, Texas? I'm raised in Athens, okay. but small town. So, I was actually born in this place called Tyler, because the hospital's better. Okay. Um, and then moved to Dallas when I was like 22. But um, Athens didn't have a music scene, so that's really where I found myself. And people are like, are you Athens or are you Dallas? I'm like, I'm both. Because, you know, I turn into a lady here and there. And yeah. so I'm both like, important parts of your yeah, life. But all of it's Texas, so yeehaw. Well, what, what's the overall vibe of Athens? I'm, not, I'm just not very familiar. Is it like a city? Is it like super country? It's a town. It's um, a town, okay. Yeah. Is and, it close to Dallas? Uh, it's an hour and a half. Okay, cool. Um, and we would drive to Dallas like if we needed a prom dress or something like that. I miss it so much because it's like country and then you cross the railroad tracks and it's like the hood. You've got like, we call them slabs. So you got like cars riding on like 24s, 26s and then you cross the tracks and people are riding horses. And so that's it's fine. the best of both worlds, <laughs> right. yeah. There's a, that seems like a big, like a huge part of Texas down south culture is like Slabs, yeah. um, you know, obviously chopped and screwed. What What are some some of the other staples like I'm, uh, that like leans from like Houston? Okay. Like they gonna be like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Like zero, you know. Um, <laughs> zero. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off. No, yeah, uh, uh, we love him. Yeah, no. So I found out about zero. I lived in Houston for like six months at really? one time, like way back in the day. Yeah, like different part of my life. Um, so uh, Cypress, I don't know if you ever heard yeah, of Cypress. Yeah, yeah, uh, Cypress, yeah. Um, and there's a big college down there, uh, PV. Um, it's like, it, it's a big school down there and uh, near that way. It's not actually in Houston. Um, it's Prairie View. Um, but we all have like, just our Texas things we go to, like South by Southwest, um, things like that, Austin. But Texas is pretty like, compact like we stay together like people are really proud to be from texas cole actually told me like when he came to texas he's like there's like all the merch and stuff there is like people are really proud to be from there Fast. like y'all aren't like we love illinois like we're from illinois i don't know if you are right um i feel like Chica the city of chicago kind of has okay, that a little okay. bit but not like the whole state the whole state yeah. is like don't mess with texas period. right I mean, I kind of came up doing South by shows, so mm -hmm. I met like a lot of Texas artists early on. Um, like uh, the outfit, I don't know if you heard like the outfit. Yeah, Texas. the outfit Texas. Are they from Dallas too? Yes, they are. They're like my people, people. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay, yeah, those are the homies. Yes. Yeah. It's like I love them. Like they worked with me when nobody else worked with me. Like, Fact. and I actually have a song out with Mel. I think I remember. Is it like a green, green screen? Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah it is a green screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I remember seeing that. Um, so the outfit and then like Maxo, obviously. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, like just like you said, everybody has, hold, has that like really big Texas pride. We have a certain sound, whether we sound alike or not. It, there's like a certain, and I feel like the, now people are starting to catch on to it. Mm -hmm. um, like as in Megan, she's really going, mm -hmm. you know, like Beat King is from Houston. And even though he's been around, he's taken back off again. Um, like it's just a sound and I feel like once people get their hands on it they they will always want it. Where does Travis Scott like fit into that sound or I don't think he he, he kind of No took offense off, to him, you know, right. like yeah. uh, he is I would say that he's more of like a pop star. Yeah, no, in a good way though. Like, yeah, in a good way. Yeah. So I'm saying um he just had a, a completely different lane where some of us are like more down like I like raw gritty music. Sometimes when they go to mix my music, I'm like, no, 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 no. And they're like, we have to mix it. I'm like, but I don't want it touched, you know? Right. It's just a certain thing. Uh, I really liked, I know it's not necessarily Travis, but uh, Don Tolliver's another artist mm -hmm. from Texas mm -hmm. who doesn't necessarily fit, I would say, that Texas sound. Okay. But um, I don't know if you saw after he dropped his project, I think it was like a week or two later, he dropped a chopped and screwed version of it. Which is? Just to kind of pay mm -hmm. homage to Texas, which I liked a lot. Which is awesome. I actually really like chopped and screwed music. I really do like it. What do you feel like, um, why do you feel like Texas is 
holds chopping screw music so close because because to me and i might not word this the best way either but like i'm looking at it and it's like okay like this is a slowed down version of the of the original song and so like what's the what, what's the foundation of that like where did that come from what's the i honestly the can't tell you where it came from um i want to say dj screw had mm -hmm. um a big impact on that um but in texas we ride like when there's nothing to do it's called like we hit blocks um, even in Athens, we hit blocks. You get in the car and you pick a song and you ride until you see Bye something. Bob. Until you see somebody having like maybe a block party, a barbecue, and you pull over. We just oh, ride. Shit. So that is riding music, and we. Ride. So you would just like pull up to random barbecues. And Whatever shit. we saw, we stopped. If we if we knew him, we stopped. Even if what if you didn't know him? You're like, hey, can somebody I come in the, the car did. Somebody in the car knew him. So uh, it was a pretty small town. Mm -hmm. Um. The population, I'm sure, has grown. Uh, the restaurants sure have. Mm -hmm. But when I was there, it was a population of 10,000 people. What, what's the go-to restaurant there? It used to be Applebee's. <laughs> uh, and it is the best little... Uh, you go... It's still, to this day, you go to Applebee's. The, you know about 50% of the people in there. Um, but they got this cotton patch now. And every time I go to Athens, I hit the cotton patch. What's cotton patch? It's like an Applebee's, but like modern and like seasoned food. And if you ever see one, please pull over. I know Whataburger. I've been to Whataburger. Okay, so that's like a trademark thing. And I actually, I could be wrong, but I heard that somebody in Chicago bought it and they would be expanding. Oh, wow. And y'all better pray for that because... No, I love Whataburger. I and actually... I actually say it and I'm wrong, but... It's, I say Whataburger, but it's Whataburger, that but Water I say Whataburger, and, and it's just because I was a little girl, and that's how I learned it, and we're just kind of, I guess, hick, I don't know. Oh, uh, water, tomato, tomato kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, speaking of, like, slabs, driving around, I love, I love what you said about it kind of being a, a cultural thing to just kind of ride around the block and just see what's going on. I feel like that's a consistent theme in a lot of your videos, too, like, yeah. making sure you showcase um that side of texas and just with your videos in general it seems like you are super hands-on with the creative and like i'm ready. running out of ideas <laughs> no 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 not not at all no i'm telling you oh i, like, I want some help i want some help they they're like hey like you know my team they're like it's time to shoot a video and that's honestly one of the funnest parts of my job is shooting the videos it's also kind of stressful um when you don't have like a really big team that's like you know they're like hey we like how organic you are we like how you know you do this and so like we want you to do this mm -hmm. and then it's like damn but like I'm getting to a point where like I want to pull up and perform rather than plan and you know what I'm saying um but yeah you know I see these ideas and I try my best to make them come to life and everything in the videos are my friends they're all they're all people off the strength of love and it's natural and I love it like that I would yeah. love to get some real actors in there and get on my acting shit, but until then, you know. Well, I think having the friends in the video brings the best out of, out of you, too, mm -hmm. right? It and does, like a definitely. genuine performance and just like supernatural. And I'm talking to a lot of people who are fans of you, that's like one of the first things they say is like, Tay's super relatable because, you know, you know who her friend group is, like, you know that the girls in the video is who she hangs out with in real life. Um, is that like a conscious thing or is that just like on some loyalty, like I'm about to ride with who I started this It's with? It's both. Like, I don't, I don't plan on quitting on anyone that's been there. Um, if we fall out or we get into an argument, we can work it out. But I don't plan on putting anyone away that's been there since the beginning. Um, and also, it is better when I know them because I've actually had a few people that um, – where if I shot in Miami or whatever and they hired some girls, like, I don't know you how I'm supposed to shake my ass with you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, but you do, you end up, you know, after I'm there, um, I'm very like, I talk to a lot of people and I don't meet a stranger. So once, you know, I talk to them for 30 minutes, you know, we're pretty good friends. We're good to go now, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyways, that's like one of the best parts of, of it. The videos and the shows are the top two. When you say like you lately you've been feeling like you kind of just want to pull up and perform. Does that mean like you feel like maybe kind of the level you're at right now, it's you're maybe spreading yourself too thin, trying to have your hands in like the creative yes. and the music and everything else? Um, definitely it is kind of draining when I'm calling. Like, you know, like uh, girls are always late. Um, so uh, there's this thing called rapper time and we're like, we're allowed to be late. Um, but like, I don't like to be late for anything mm -hmm. ever. Um, so I'm usually getting ready last minute, and the last thing I want to be doing is texting my friends to make sure they're going to be here at this time. Can you wear this? Can you, you know, 
uh, that's the last thing I want to be doing. And it and it kind of takes when I get there to perform. I'm like, oh, I'm already freaking tired. Stressed you know out. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I've been thinking about a million things all day. Like. And and then also if you invite random people to come, sometimes it can turn into a meet and greet. And mm. it's like I don't turn anyone away right. because I'm nothing without you. So what do I look like being a rude? Yeah, no, you know what I'm saying. It puts so, you in a difficult position when you got other It's tiring. It is tiring. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I think that I'm, like it seems like a problem that a lot of artists have is when do you make the transition from like okay, now I just need to put my head solely in the music and just get hyper focused. Yeah. And like, be, I'm almost yeah. Like I'm 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 there. I'm there. But I want to still keep my exactly who I am. Like I want nothing to change or anyone to view me as not the southern hospitality girl that I am. I think you're doing a great job of it so far. Thank um, you. So out of all the videos, obviously you're very hands-on with all of them. Which one are you most proud of? That's hard. That's a good question. Need, That's a good question. One. My fault. <laughs> uh, I love the video. It's called Take Money by Take Money. Mm. Um, I really like this one called You Can't Do Me. Um, it was one of like the very first ones. The song's not on Spotify or Apple or nothing like that. You know, I just dropped it. I didn't know what I was doing, and I never went back and redropped it because I didn't see the need in it. Um, also, I'm really excited for the Sweetie one because like just Sweetie is just everything. So to have that under my belt is amazing. Also, Mulatto, that was good. That video was amazing. I thought mm -hmm. that video was great. Thank you. They, and it was very helpful because that was one where I was able to pull up and perform. Mm, right. Um, yeah. there was everything a, was done. It was everything was put together so nicely and it was so relaxing. And I was like, damn, I'm spoiled. Y'all gonna have to come like this every time. <laughs> how, how was it working on set with her? She was so nice. She mm -hmm. was so, so, so nice. Uh, way exceeded my expectations. I was gonna. You brought up Saweetie too. I was. I'm, I know the story already. I think. I think we both do. But for the fans out there that don't know, can you kind of walk us through how the Bustin' remix came about? Because I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. I was just at home chilling. Um. And my team had actually reached out to me about having it remixed um, by someone, and I told them no because it wasn't. It didn't make sense. You know it didn't what I'm saying? Feel right. It. It wasn't. I felt like a girl needed to be on it. It was a boy. I told them no. Which is very hard for me to do. I hate to tell people no that want it. They're trying to help. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Um, and then she just hits me up randomly on IG. I was in my message request. And um, she's like, what's happening? And then I was like, what's happening? And this is like right after the conversation. <laughs> this is a day later. Okay. This is a day later. Um, and she said, what's happening? And I was like, what? I was like, hey. Like, I'm not ice, even going to lie. I see emoji. I just straight up said, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, um, really. And she said, I want to hop on bussing. And then I was like, I'll send you an open right now. Where do you want to send? Right. And she she sent it to me and she said, let's fuck shit up on my mama. And then I was like, on oh, my mama. Right. Say less. <laughs> I sent it. She And she faced She's like, let me get your number. And she FaceTimed me. And like, I was like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> I was like, hello. And she was like, she's like, yeah. Um, anyways, she was the biggest sweetheart. I really, she was actually the first really, really big artist to reach out to me. So I told her, I was like, anything you ever need, like, please let me know. I can, I'll get whatever I can for you. Um, and then we went to the shoot and she actually introduced me to Quavo and told me that Quavo put her on to Put, oh wow! And and I was like, wow, it was so nice. I couldn't even believe it. Um, that's got to be amazing to hear. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. Um, that's so cool. Thanks so much. I think one of the things that's been so great about this year is seeing the hip hop community and rap culture just finally like start to appreciate women in rap, and you know, su just su fully support. Female empowerment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I, outside of rap too, obviously, but it's a huge leap for us this year. Um, boys just don't take girls as seriously. Um, this year, we just came correct. Like they, we they just had to. Like we're stepping on next. Like they low key like to trying to secure their position. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, um, okay. I'm very thankful for that because with other girls in charge, um, they give other girls listens that deserve it, that mm -hmm. didn't get it before. They'd see a girl and I know that keeps scrolling, you know? Right, right, yeah, no, and it's unfortunate that I've been like that for so long. I think I think also a big part of it too is just like the camaraderie, right? Like Saweetie being like, just hitting you up on a DM, super organic. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there was a time in music, um, just in general, where that wouldn't have wouldn't have maybe happened. Like people, I it feel was that. way more competitive and like now it just seems like 
It, I do believe that um, people don't want to see people doing better than them. Right. Um, and it's unfortunate that that's like that. But I think that, um, and it's crazy that this is happening now because there's a lot of evil going on in the world right now that now people want to help and people want to step in and do those things. Um, I'm just, I'm thankful that I get to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thankful that my career is still going because I know that the pandemic you know, it ended a lot of people. Yeah. You know, it did. It it either it will either make you or break you. And um, you know, I've been working really hard, and it's paying off for me. So I'm thankful for that. How, how did the pandemic affect your artistry? Because I know a lot of people got super unmotivated. Some people are like, oh, I can't even go out. What's the point of even right um, making music at this point? But I lost quite a bit of money. Um, I was like in the middle of a mini tour, um, and they actually canceled it and I was you know count on that money to come in also when we were locked indoors for so long I was feeling guilty and really bad about myself for not being in the studio mm -hmm. but it was like in the very beginning we were really too scared to move and too scared to go around anybody no one knew what was going on we didn't it was very it's still very scary but in the very beginning it was like movie like it still is um my kids won't believe it one day i didn't want to work i didn't want to be around anybody and then i felt bad and i would try to make myself going in right but my mind wasn't in the right place and um in order for me to actually make music i had to catch vibes like i had to go to miami and la and lock in for a week um mm -hmm. it doesn't really happen at home for me sometimes but i, I go catch vibes and that's how i make music what was the first thing you're doing as soon as the world's completely open? I want to go to I want to go to like Paris. Like mm. I want to like I want to like go see some stuff. Um, I'm like I'm like a travel person. Like I would rather get a trip than get a gift. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like memories. Um, Have you been overseas yet? I've been to Dominican Republic um, and Mexico. Me That's it. Not Mexico. <laughs> Mexico is like one of my favorite places For to go. Yeah. And it is open right now. Um, and so, like, I'm thinking about, like, just <laughs> buying that ticket real quick. Well, I'm sure once everything's back open, you'll get that chance to go overseas, probably do some shows over there. That would be awesome. Over there. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I would love to just go to the club and let loose one good time. And I'm so sick of the masks, but I know that they help everybody and everything. Um, I'm fine not being in the club. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, just one time, just, like, let loose. Yeah, like, every once in a while, you got to, like, just let out some steam. And, and just knowing that it's not an option right now, I think, right. is what makes it worse, right? Like, even mm -hmm. if you weren't, like, a, going to the club every weekend before, just knowing that, like, you can't now. Yeah. We took a lot of things for granted. Exactly. We took a ton a of things A lot of things Oh, my God. Even just eating out. I know. I'm, I'm so sick about that. Literally. I can't even just like my Go. favorite restaurant in Chicago is closed. It's been closed this entire time. What is it? This place called Heaven on Seven. I'm gonna have to go check it out when it's they Cajun open. Cajun food is delicious. Mm -hmm. So let's say a couple months forward, pandemic's over. Tay Money's in Paris. Paris. We, grab, we grab a random guy off the street. Where we're like, "This is Tay Money. She's a rapper." How would we describe your music to him? Country fabulous, like bubble rap. I love that. I love all that. Thank keep going, you. Keep it going. Uh, keep it like, going. um, take money, take money, take money. That's all it is. Take money, take money, take money. Top five rappers, take, 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 take. But I, I know we talked about know. earlier, it was a lot of Texas music, especially mm -hmm. you growing up, just listening to. Is there a certain artist or just a few artists that when you started to get a little bit older, you're like, yo, I want to rap? because of this person as far as rap i didn't know that i would love probably and this is the first time i've ever said this but i probably would have loved to have been a singer i would play destiny's child i had this cd player in my room and i would like perform it like in sixth grade like i would like i thought that i was then and I would try to sing, and then I remember one of my cousins was like, "Why do you sound so nasally?" <laughs> and I never forgot it. And I was like, "But uh, one of my favorite, my th this song I heard Jaquan Tipsy. I had stole my sister's CD player. I played little league basketball, and we were at nationals. Um, it's called Level Land in this place in Texas. Okay. And um, I and I was in the car, and we were warming up. We were about to go in, 
And I was like, one, two, two. And I was like, this shit is good. And like, it's, I have the Jaquan vinyl. I'm obsessed. For yeah. some reason, I always get that and like holiday and confused. For it. It's like that, the same That vibe. vibe, that era is like still to this day what I listen to. If you play like a new song, like today's time, like I don't know the words. I make up my own words and I just hum to the melody. If you play that <laughs> shit, I'm like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like going word for word for word for word for word. No, I mean, I think, I, and that shows in your music too. Like you have the Eve sample and. Um, oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on it. Um, Blow Your Mind. Yeah, Blow Your Mind. Yeah, yeah, with Gwen Stefani. Exactly. But I just think that, like, that early 2000s era is like, so, uh, like, now, like, people kind of label it so oh, it's, it's kind of forgotten about. I but. actually ask for the beats. I'm like, can you make this? And they're like, like, nobody can make that anymore. And Thanks. I'm like, why? But. Right, yeah, we got way more technology now yeah. than they did back then. Even, um, I think one of the first, Trapper's Delay, I think, was the first song I heard by you. But then when I went back and kind of dove in deeper, there's you did a freestyle over Young Jock. Yeah. Going, going just down. Go down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even stuff like that. Yeah, like you could tell that you're very rooted in that in that area. And I really, I really like that. That's actually music. how I learned to rap was Word. I would just play the instrumentals that I knew. Like I would know a song and I'd play the instrumental and... I actually um, write the best stuff when I'm in my car, like freestyling down the highway. Like that's why I don't actually play music if I'm by myself. Now, if I'm with friends, I'll never freestyle. Well, they're girlfriends, yeah. Except this, like with y'all. Unless with with Sal, you'll freestyle. <laughs> oh, Sal, Sal, Sal yes. Yeah. Sal, uh, I feel like it was honestly one of the best freestyles that's ever happened in this studio. But uh, I, you know about this? One one night, me and Sal are making a song. Um, we make songs in here sometimes. Tay, uh, Tay blessed us with like an eight bar freestyle and, uh, and it was okay. pristine and he wasn't recording yeah. it was oh our, I did hear about that <laughs> it was our first day figuring out how to use Pro Tools um, but oh, yeah, so going to have to live terrible with terrible engineer it's okay speaking of Trapper's Delight uh, that we kind of just talked about a little bit how how did that moment feel I, I, I guess from the outside looking in that seemed like your first like Song Real kinda, song. Like, got you out It was the first beat that wasn't, I didn't steal off oh, YouTube. Facts, okay. it, was a, it was a real beat. It was incredible. Yeah. I had no idea what would happen or what it would turn into or that everyone would freaking like it like they do to this day <laughs> still. If I see anyone, they're like, Tay, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> cut it out. Um, but um, actually, shout out Drophy. Um, it's Narco Wave. He brought me, he was my first trip he ever brought me to um, LA and he gave me these beats and he recorded me um, with my friends and let me catch vibes. And I'm actually about to go out to LA and work with him again and just get back in our bag. Is it, will this be the first time working with him since Travis Delay? Um, we've, we've worked one other time, but I'm actually going into lock in with, with him like those times. You know what I'm saying? So, working on an album or what's coming up? So, I'm about to drop an EP and it's looking like the beginning of December. We're aiming for December 4th. Nice. Um, 11th at the latest. Jay Z's birthday, I think. December really? 4th, yeah. I love Jay Z. Oh, wow. I love Jay Z. But that's done. That's all done. Um, it's being mixed right now. And. I'm actually aiming to put out, I want to drop an album like January, February. I'm trying to backdoor. Like I'm trying to backdoor. Bam, bam, bam. If I keep shoving it in their face, they have no choice but to yeah, all hell take money. Time. <laughs> only a matter of time. Back to the Trapper's Delight, what, what were kind of your expectations when you were putting that video out? I know that was like the first one to go for you. Had you released a few songs before that? I had no idea, but I could tell you it was different when I dropped it on Twitter. You knew it was going to be... Something I dropped it on Twitter, and you know, I maybe had like Twitter's like hard to get followers on. Mm -hmm. um, I dropped it on game, Twitter but. within like probably thirty minutes. It was like fifteen hundred likes, which was a lot for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I had actually had surgery that day. And when Dance Daily, he's a videographer from Dallas. Uh, he's my homeboy. He's done a few videos for me. He's the goat. He sent it to me, and I was doped up, straight out of surgery, and I dropped it. Oh, and I didn't even know if I was dropping it correctly. <laughs> I dropped it, and I went to sleep, and I woke up, and 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 my shit was to kingdom coming back. And I was like... Life changed when you woke up? From the yes, and then they were like... And I, uh, they called me, like, Tay, like, they want to see you in New York. Like, labels want to talk to you. I'm like, for what? What they want to talk about? <laughs> and I was working my job. I called them, and I said, I cannot come in tomorrow. <laughs> I cannot. They're like, well, 
you got to get somebody to cover your shit. Where like, were you working? Uh, dry bar. It's a hair salon. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Do you still get a chance to like do hair today? Actually, um, this is my first time saying this, too. Okay. I'm thinking about going back to dry bar because it was so fun, and I, I want to work one day out of a week. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I'm, I'm kind of a little bored when I'm not working um, because I have such a free life, mm-hmm. and I truly love hair. And who don't like extra money, period. Right, and nice. then they could be like, I got my hair done by Tay Money. Like, I think it would be an awesome thing. Um, You'd probably bring a ton of business to, this, to the place. Too. Period. Yeah. Um, either that or I'll open up my own little booth where I rent for the weekend. I love that job um, because you get to make girls feel good, which is still what I do. Yeah. Uh, I still do that. But the clients and talking to them, and it was my favorite. It was my favorite part. And I would, I don't want to go back, but like, like full time. But like, if mm-hmm. worse came to worse, like I would go back. With and I keep my license up to date. I never let it. Every two years you have to renew it. Every two years I renew it. Facts. You and uh, BFB the Pac Man would get along really well. He still works at the post office. So. I, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, you guys are holding it down for that. Staying true to the day job, so and and I think, I, like in all seriousness, that's, um, you know, what what whatever route you go with it, whether it's working there one day a week or starting starting your own thing, I think it's really commendable and just kind of rare to like hear artists of your caliber like express I, real interest in that. You know, like, I really do love my freedom, but too much freedom can be a bad thing. Facts. Um, you start to look at yourself in areas you never looked at yourself or whatever it may be. Um, and I like to stay busy, but not too busy because I'm pretty lazy. So it don't it, it just Good all balance. balances out. Yeah. yeah. One thing I feel like that keeps you busy, or it seems like it is, you run a pretty big Depop account. I right? love Depop. Yeah. I shop on there more than I sell. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I think that's all of those for all of us, right? I don't take the best pictures for my clothes because I'm lazy, like I said, but I'm still doing something. So like I said, the balance. Um, but shout out Depop. They yeah. got me verified on there. And now, nice. mm-hmm. and actually, um, so shout out my mom because she helps me run it. Word. Because sometimes I'm not in town to ship things out. Um, and so most of the time you're getting a package from my mom. But I do send out <laughs> autographs in it with it as well if you right. ask for it. Do most people know that it's your your account? Like they're familiar with Tame Money Yes, Artists they do. Yeah, they do. Fun fact here, uh, actually before her and Cole started dating and before she had met my girlfriend, uh, Which I love, though. Yeah, they're <laughs> like besties now, of course. But uh, Tay actually followed her on Depop before they knew each other. Yes, I <laughs> wanted Bill saying I've always, always wanted a pair of babes. That's my one thing. I've never had a pair of babes. <laughs> Bill was selling some, and I wanted to buy them. They had no idea who each other were. They just like talked on Depop. That's about so funny. Yeah. How did you guys find out? Find out that they told me after I got here. Yeah, she got here. Uh, Bill was looking at you. She was like. She's like, do you think this is the same Tay Money? I was like, uh, yeah, I feel like there's not too many Tay Monies in the world. <laughs> I love um, that thrifting and kind of like... I went thrifting today. Did you? Yes, you I did. I'd be buying bags full. Did you go... So you went out here? I feel like yeah. in Chicago, the thrifting, like the pool, thrifting pool is kind of hit or miss because it's such a big city. And like, so from that, I think you get a ton of cool stuff that you can find, but people like... It's so I have a very good eye on Google for mm-hmm. what one to pick. Facts. I don't like the main branches, like no offense to Goodwill and Salvation Army, but it's got to everybody knows. It's got to be an in between, like not a beat up run one by themselves, and not like a branch. Got to be like an in between. The ones I love out here is called Unique. Mm, you're putting me. I, I've never Unique heard of thrift it. store. I really like it. Word. But I will tell you that there's nothing better than a Texas thrift store. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I mean, I'm from I'm from Michigan, and I, up there, it's just way easier to like come across like a fire. It's harder here because y'all's clothes are more winter clothes. Yeah, true. Heavier clothes, long sleeves. As where girls are looking for quick tank tops to go to the club in. Well, in Texas, all everything's hot always, so right. we got millions and millions of tank tops. Right. But I be spending way more than I should, and then. It's like you just defeated the purpose, but I also got a hundred things. You know what I'm saying? Right, so yeah, it's way better. Right. And and I mean, I, I look at it as like if you cop a hundred things, you're already getting them for like super cheap, anyways. If you wear like a quarter of them, you you you, you want. Oh, and if I don't wear them, I end up depopping them. It works there out. There you go. Well, yeah. What's the craziest piece you've ever found in a thrift store? There's this jacket, um, and I found it, and it was fifty dollars. 
I want to say it's Jeffrey Hamilton. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. It's this guy. He makes sport jackets. So I knew it was something special. It was all black leather, real leather, and there's every NBA patch on it. Every right. NBA patch on it. And I knew it was something special, and I looked it up, and they go for like $800. Wow. $700. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> it happened to be too big for me, but I ended up buying it anyways. And I gave it to my best friend, Sam, because he was just like, I need it, I need it. And Sam's actually a writer, um, and I had to beg him to come to the studio one day. And I was like, I'll give you the jacket if you come. <laughs> uh, and he came. I gave him the jacket, and I was like, fuck. So I looked it up and bought another one. And nice. But I, I only paid like 200 for it, but it was worth it. And I've worn it a few times. Um, it's in this video called 2K. But don't go look it up because I'm gonna wear it again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a like a Pelly like Avrex style leather jacket. Yes, like, it is just 90s. like that. Nice. That's not. Cool. I love. I, I found one like of those that. too, and I love it. How would you describe kind of like your fashion? Like you have a very distinct look. Britney Spears from the hood. <laughs> Britney nice. Spears from the hood. I love yeah. Xtina. She's an icon. Um, I used to be more into like the rainbow glitter loud. She did she wear that? Yes, she did. Um, and now it's more I've like used that, but put it in a lady. Word. Yeah, kind of I, I bought some nice things today. Um, it's so lady like I can't wait to wear it. I'm so excited. My mom's gonna be like, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next video maybe or something. Yes, pop out. The one, the hit Bussin. single, Bussin. So with Bussin. It was on the album, and TikTok got a hold of it somehow. Mm-hmm. Praise TikTok. I remember my management calling me like, bro, like, go look at this crap. Go look at this crap. And, and I checked on it, and it said 20,000 videos. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, I'm, I'm anti-technology. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get it. I don't want to get it. I like real life. You know what I'm saying? But because of our jobs, I'm forced to be on it. I'm forced to be a part of it. And honestly, now I like it, but I still hate it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a necessary part of it. Um, yes, that. it's like, I'm going to check it, but do I enjoy checking it? Right. Not really. Right. Anyways, I'm like, dang, that's crazy. They're like, post one, use it, do it. I'm like, okay, so I do it. Um, and the next day, it's like 50,000 videos. I'm like, this is crazy. Never in my life did I think it would reach 2.3 million videos. That oh, is funny. insane. I'm like, mom, mom. She's like, what does it mean? I'm like, I don't know. And I feel like that was like one of the first songs to really set the TikTok trend of like, Trying to market something on there. And that it was organic for you. Someone which is crazy. Yeah. Which is truly crazy. Because I know people are paying for that type of stuff. Um, I didn't have any idea what was happening. And I do feel that it helped out a lot with Sweetie and um, just a whole bunch of things. It, it, you know, it really gave me a, an extra push and it gave me an extra listen, which every artist needs. I love that you put your mom in the video. That's amazing. Have to. Like, if I could have put her in more, I would have. Um, she's so funny. She actually showed up. I'm a crown drinker. Okay. She's crown and coke in your cup. Right around fuck <laughs> Trump. Hey, okay. Hey. Hey. Okay. Um, I actually actually pulled up to the video shoot with a little bit of crown, and she was nervous, and it was so cute. It was so 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 cute. Um, like she didn't know if she could bring it or whatever, or like. No, she was sipping on it. She was nervous. Oh, fast. And, and then I uh, like, you really are my mama. Um, but <laughs> people actually. The amount of love I get in my messages for my mom is crazy. I'm like, we we actually wore matching juicy suits. I ordered <laughs> me and Mary. We ordered two suits, and it was so much fun. Can you kind of give us the rundown of? Because I feel like there's like four or five of your friends that are like the gang, like the gang. consistently. Can you give us a rundown of who the, the whole crew is? Okay, so I have Mary, um, and she started out as a stylist. We just met at a photo shoot one day, and she's turned into one of my best friends. Right. She, We have the same brain. Like, I, <laughs> like we have the same brain. Yeah. Uh, Goldie, she's been my best friend. I met her at a party, and we've been inseparable for about three or four years. Through her, I met her sister. Her name's Pardis, okay. um, who is my fellow dog lover, and <laughs> she tells it like it is. And when she gets drunk, she's so enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. And and there's Elmira. She's a stand-up comedian, truthfully. The funniest bitch I know. She's hilarious. And they will all beat your ass about me. Um, and they they keep me going. And then there's Sam. Um, he also makes music. He goes by a guitar emoji. And I've never had a guy best friend before. And this is my guy best friend. Um, and we got Kyle, my DJ. Uh, Kyle got that cannon, duh. 
<laughs> I've got Maximilian. He always does my hair. Um, no, uh, nobody from your softball days? <laughs> unfortunately, no. But I still keep in contact with a few people. Oh, you still talk to some people? Yeah. You play how, how serious were you with softball? Play? Oh, we, we eat, breathe, sleep it. I remember <laughs> I started um, playing softball when I was probably three or four years old mm -hmm. um, and I was in pitching lessons hitting lessons and I even got a scholarship to play at college wow. um, for a year and then I quit because I hate school but uh, I want you to stay in school please <laughs> I know sports bitches don't know sports like take money so just so you know Facts. What is the what was your favorite sports moment of the year? Weird weird year for sports. Cole actually has me hooked on the Chicago Bears, which is nice. really really crazy. Nice. Um, and they seem to always come back in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're having a crazy. They're year. having a crazy year. I don't yeah. think anyone expected them to like do. He's taught me so much. I like know the players like first and last name. Like that's crazy because I don't, I know the Dallas Cowboys, but I don't know them like first and last name. Yeah, as nice. far as for like this year, the craziest thing. Um, it's hard to say because of the pandemic everything was crunched together it's actually hard for me to watch because at one point all three sports were going on at the same time and i didn't tune in like that and they look different too it's like a different feel like yeah it's like you the need the crowd yeah you need it and i know it probably stinks and sucks for them because like that's probably like an adrenaline thing you can hear them screaming at by and that, you know what i'm saying Definitely. especially for like basketball like it's such like a closed space and then just to go to basically playing in like an open gym it's like practice like yeah, what's what we're doing yeah practice yeah um on the topic of the bears i feel like it's a uh, Good time to ask this question. We're going to our lightning what round. What is it? What is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we, it is we, a great we, transition. We, we, we've got a couple questions for you to right away. <laughs> shoot the answer. So, obviously, Texas girl in Chicago now. Bears or Cowboys? <gasps> oh, my God. One I or the other. Well, I'm not going to lie. It you has to be the one. Bears because the Cowboys are sucking this year. They are sucking, and that's not a freaking secret. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Um, okay. Whataburger or In-N-Out? Whataburger. Jonathan or Tay? Jonathan. <laughs> CP or Sal? <gasps> no, you can't do that. No, no, just, <laughs> no, literally can't. every single one, you have to give an answer. Elmir or Goldies? Oh, y'all are out of line. That's a good one. Get out of here. All right, all right, all right. Jake, walks out. All right, all right. Jake Mian or Jake Wilson? I'm not doing that. Y'all better come up with a new question. <laughs> all right, that was, that was, I just threw that one in. Okay. Funny. But, um, okay, vintage or designer? Vintage. Okay. All right, we going peach or apple crown? Peach. Roller coaster or water park? Water park. Yoo-hoo or sweet tea? <gasps> Yoo-hoo, which is so crazy. Chocolate I drink. I love a good chocolate drink. Okay. Not chocolate milk. Chocolate drink. There we go. Tougher question, Yoo-hoo or lyrical lemonade? Mm, lyrical lemonade. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being a good sport. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, is there anything that you want to talk about? We've been kind of talking a lot, but I know you got music coming up, like you said, videos, anything, collabs you should look out for. Um, the the tape is coming. It's called Blocked with a T at the end. Because bitch, right. get blocked. You could never get to me, period. <laughs> duh, like all that and then some. Period. Um, what are you most excited about on that project? That's hard. That's hard, friend. Um, there's this one called Ice. Mm -hmm. There's this one called Like Duh. <laughs> there is a song that did not make it, that deserves to make it. And the reason I didn't is because the sample is a little bit too pricey. It's coming. And the video is going to go so crazy that they're going to have no choice but to clear it just like that. Yes. I also wanted to say um, that the world is going through a lot right now. And so to just be kind to everyone because you don't know what they're going through or who's suffering. Um, so if you could just be nice. Flat out. Period. Flat like, there is no room for being mean right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about that. It's just such a weird time going on right now. Is, is there any advice you give to anybody that's trying to become an artist right now during these weird times? For my upcoming artists, I would supply the content and not stay on Instagram full time. Mm. I feel like you tend to look at others and see what they have going and not everyone is the same. Limit your screen time. They need to hear you and they need to see you to fall in love with you. So you're gonna have to come correct with the visual. It can't be no shitty video. You need to come correct. You need to capture exactly who you are. You don't need to be anybody you're not. And if you got it, then you got it. That's great advice. Thank you.
Um, last question real quick. This is from my boy Elliot. Um, he wants to know what your top five Texas, and I want to know too, what oh your top gosh. five Texas yeah, rappers are of all time. Yeah, you too. Okay. Big Tut. Okay. Classic. Paul Wall. Classic. Amazing. I hope he's from Texas. <laughs> is Lil Flip from Texas? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, why can I not think about who's from Texas? So we got oh, one. I like Tita Korean. Oh, that's a Tisa, great choice. T- yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> and this is going to sound crazy. Shout out Young Nation. Young Nation? Do you know what it is? I don't. Smell my Dolce and Gabbana. Hey. I could probably hit your baby mama. Hey. <laughs> I never heard. You know what that is? No. You got to gotta check them out. So I actually have to say this. Um, Young Nation was way ahead of their time. Mm. Uh, they still make music. Uh, but if they would have dropped those hits right now, nobody would be fucking with them. Like Word. nobody. You have to check them out. How long ago did did, did it come out? I'm gonna say like five, six, seven, maybe years ago. Okay, cause that name sounds familiar. But Young I can't Nation. Why U N G Nation? Okay. We're they 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 those? started the way. They just was way too early, Word. which sucks really bad. But oh. shout out Big Tuck, uh, Swag School's Nine Session, and I'm the dean of this now. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but it's like some Texas shit, I'm sure. Yeah. So, shout out. Thank you so much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. It's um, fun. It was a true pleasure. Um, we're going to tap into Young Nation right after this. Yeah. You drink a little crown, maybe? Do you have to? And get ready for that new time money. On that note, episode five of Crown Conversations. Like, subscribe, comment, tell us who you want to see on the next episode. I'm JB. I'm Lil Jake. I'm Tay Money. Yeah.